<laughs> and you wouldn't believe what we've just been talking about. Well, perhaps we should let you into the inner sanctum. We're about to uh, with our guest today at Manchester United. So eggs, three and a half minutes. Yes. Yes. Because you see, I, I find though, Richard, three and a half, I asked you what your perfect egg is. Boiled egg, you said three and a half minutes. That would be mine normally. But what I found, you see, if it's the large eggs, yes. Mm -hmm. Right? If it's the large eggs. Large free range. Uh, oh, obviously. Yes. Yeah. Uh, organic, if I can. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if it's a large egg, three and a half minutes is perfect. But if it's a small egg, I think three and a half minutes, my yolk's about too firm. From boiling. Yes, from boiling. Which is important. That's important. From and boiling. yes, the other uh, question you asked me. Big potatoes. You can use the smaller potatoes. I tend to slice the top right. through them so they've got room to expand. Just a little cross. Yeah, just a couple of lines. Right. And you can use the smaller ones. I always give them 10 minutes in the microwave. But I this always add lot, an extra way. minute or two in the oven to crisp the uh, shell. Oh, right. oh, I don't do the oven bit at the end. It's very good. And but beans and cheese? Oh, to yeah, die for. Me too. That's um, my lunch today. <laughs> we can't dwell too much on this, having, having <laughs> used the time that we've got for yeah. the cookery class. But I'll just run you a few, through a few of these because they're fascinating. Hull City have uh, broken ranks in the championship and said it's got to be voided. Okay. Um, um, Voidy did I mean no promotion, no relegation? Just, I, I, it didn't get into that, Andrew. Oh, God, uh, Fabio <laughs> Capello has been telling tales again. Uh, the dressing room smells like alcohol, Van Nistelrooy once said to me, revealing Ronaldo's party and created problems at Real Madrid. <laughs> uh, Neymar's agent has said that he'll probably stay at PSG this summer because the economic world of football will change. Oh, the excellent. most influential man in football, Nasser Al-Khalifi, mm -hmm. president of yes. PSG, has done a good job, I think, in negotiating the extended contract or yep. a settlement of the current terms. Uh, Liverpool say they will lift the trophy whenever they lift it mm -hmm. in their current kit, not Nike's. Um, Does that surprise you? I'm pleased because I think New Balance have, have deserved the right. No, no, no. After the, if the contract's gone, <laughs> get off. I'm out of here. I'm not playing. I mean, sorry, sorry. I thought it was, thought it was you there for a minute. <laughs> Premier League clubs with small dressing rooms like Burnley and Palace have been told to make the VIP areas available ah, if, if we get playing for social again distancing. for social distancing mm. purposes. Inconclusive tests, we discussed yesterday, mm -hmm. are delaying Star's return. The BBC have come out from behind the sofa and have decided that they too are going to object to the Saudi Arabian proposed takeover BBC of Newcastle have. United as a result of You're intellectual joking. rights that's, stolen well, that's by BLQ. And all of a sudden the government in the UK have that's sat big. up and taken notice. BBC, that's it. big. It's just extraordinary. That's Silence big. of the Rams. Mel Morris, the owner of Derby County, has said we would rather not play on in empty stadiums, foregoing a chance to get into the playoffs as well. Um, Troy Dean has been proved right. Mariapa, one of those tested positive mm -hmm. At Watford, I've said to you, one is too many. You've said to me, 25 might be a number that, that causes concerns. I don't know. I don't think the, 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 the league are changing their attitude anytime soon, Richard, about uh, one or two players. Let's not get into it. it. I know, but um, they're not. Being black does not put it to you at greater risk, new researchers now said. Um, I hope I, that's true, by the way. Uh, so do I. I hope that's true. Uh, Westminster demanding some free-to-air matches. Is this the same government that at the start of this COVID-19 crisis, Andy, was demanding that yeah. footballers give their money back and, 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 and come into line? Listen, I've, my stance has not changed. It's mad what we pay footballers. Mm -hmm. But the government were demanding, mm -hmm. on the one hand, players give back, and now they're demanding the players give two because mm -hmm. they want matches back on. Mm -hmm. They're good, aren't they, the government? Uh, Roberto Martinez has signed an extension of his contract in Belgium and Everton have got a new kit deal with Hummel, who wants to put them at the front wow. of their worldwide marketing campaign. Yeah. Remember them? Yes, I think I Everton do. have had Hummel before, I think they, they might have done. Was it well, Lecoq? I do, know, I do know that Alan Ball wore Hummel. Boots. Oh, the boots, Very yes. early days. Yes. I don't know whether that was it. Sergio, I said to you yesterday, players, you know, how can we trust them to do the right things? My, my argument is we can't. Sergio Aurier facing a fine for a third breach of lockdown rules, this time for getting a haircut. Uh, if, if we're to isolate in hotels for 14 days, mm -hmm. it turns out the government will have to change the law because at the moment <laughs> hotels are not allowed to open. Oh, uh, uh, um, Kante, now this is a uh, serious one. Uh, N'Golo Kante refusing to train at Chelsea. I saw that. Um, not just because he's concerned, but his older brother, Niyama, died of a heart attack in 2018. He lost his father when he was 11 and he passed out in front of teammates in the dressing room at Cobham recently. Cardiology tests did not reveal any heart issue, but naturally he is concerned and I understand uh, that. Listen, we all understand that, respect it and understand it and he makes the decision mm. purely in what he believes. Another problem, sticky balls. Sorry. Um, Sorry. <laughs> 
disinfected football. Oh, Players right. are saying they don't right. behave in the way that they normally do. So oh, come on. Really? Seriously. What, Disinfectant what, 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 that is what, being sprayed onto the balls yes. has reacted in the hot weather in the UK, causing the surface to become tacky and affecting movement. Oh, that would be lovely though. Think about it. A little tackiness on the ball. What would oh, that Get be? off. Hold on. Think about it. Jordan so, I... so your boot doesn't spin off it. So if there's a little bit of tackiness on it, if you want to spin it, surely that extra grip... Well, of course it doesn't. You get it off your foot. Nah, and, yeah. uh, Jordan Ibe, another one that's been breaking lockdown rules. Well done, Jordan. He, he's been having a he's haircut. He's had a good season, Jordan. He, he has. One he's way had a really good season. Right, right. <laughs> so having run through boiled eggs, uh, uh, um, potatoes, baked potatoes, baked potatoes and mm -hmm. a, a brief summary of the football, let's explain to you who our guest is today. Um, for 10 years, he was the face of security at Manchester United. Mm. There is nobody, Andy, that he has not met. That's true. Uh, this picture here of him with the Queen. The Queen. It's he, a good start. It's just, <laughs> here he is with the King, Sir Alex Ferguson and Steve McLaren in 1999. Uh, with a young Ryan Giggs. With a young Oli Gunnar Solskjaer. Look how young Oli looks here. It's extraordinary. Uh, with Barack Obama. <laughs> um, <laughs> he has been absolutely with Eric Cantona, whom he man-marked in the months, yeah, the weeks after, and the months after, after Selhurst Parkgate, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, he, he no longer runs the security, but for 10 years he was the man in the leather mac on yeah. the touchlines that, that, that was uh, almost joined at the hip with Alex Ferguson. Yeah. Uh, fascinating guy, former SAS man, yeah. he was there when the Iranian embassy was Correct. stormed. He was one of those guys. Um, you don't mess with Ned unless you're me. Oh, yeah, 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 or Andy. Um, and but he's a really good guy and, and in our, with our constant search to find different things for you to be entertained by and be part mm. of, we thought, why not? So um, a little earlier in the week, we did sit down with Ned. Mm. Uh, it, one or two fascinating tales here, <laughs> I promise you. Yeah. So, so Ned, tell us, uh, in some ways, you were right at the forefront of the change between football clubs being, football stadiums being policed literally by bobbies to what? private security. It's, it's something you invented. So. How did that change occur from SAS man into football club security man? Okay, I had a friend that you, that you just looked after all the pop stars, the Stones, Queen, uh, the Osmonds. His name was Jim Callahan, and he had a cup, and he was in the army, and he took a shine to me. And I was coming out of the army in '88, and I met him at one of the reunions in London, and he said, "Listen," he says, "We've got this big star coming across." And we want somebody that knows BG, i.e. bodyguard and VIP protection. Well, at Hereford, I used to instruct on it. You know, and I used to train mm -hmm. up um, the RPG, which is the Royal Protection Group from the Metropolitan Police, and they look after the Royal Family. So I'm at Wembley on one of the gigs with Jackson, Michael Jackson, yeah? Who, you know, who eventually was involved in security detail, yeah? And we had an incident at, 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 at Wembley, the old Wembley. And what happened was that we had a guy that climbed up the thing in the, in the middle of the crowd called a mixer. Yeah. And of course, I mean, I was a big roughy, toughy SAS man, and everybody looked at me because there was no police. So I, anyway, I solved the problem, and I'm driving back up the M4 to Hereford, and it just hit me because I was a member of the Hereford branch of the Manchester United Supporters Club, and I've been going there for years, you know, when I come back from being abroad working and all that. And then I would go to, to a couple of matches. And of course, the place was just covered with police. Well, here we are at Wembley, and there's something like 78 to 80,000 people here. And it's run by stewards. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Very, very few police. And then what I've done, you know, I went away and I thought about it, and I wrote letters to the top six clubs. United, City, Everton, Arsenal, and Liverpool, and Everton. And the only one that got back to me was Martin Edwards. So I went up there, I'd done a presentation in 1990, and um, he gave me a trial with eight guys for six games. Sorry, for four games. And the first game I'd, I'd done it was, was against your old club, Coventry. Wow. And, and that's how it not started. Well, to and be fair, not much of a crowd there then, Ned, that day. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was that, sir? He said, to not be... much of a crowd there that day then, uh, for Coventry. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, so they gave us a trial. Uh, I had about four four home games left, and um, eventually, like you know, I went back the next season, and then it increased every year once I could prove I could do the job. At that time, again, you were you were breaking new ground. What what was that like? What were the demands of looking after 
Premier League players in that era? What really made me well known to people uh, was, you know, Eric, and that night down at Crystal Palace, you know, when he got number over the crowd. Now, Norman Davis, I was in the, I was, I was in the crowd as a supporter behind it, behind the director's box. And uh, what happened then, once it kicked off, I mean, Norman was 64, 65, you know, I mean, Eric was about 28, you know, six foot two, you know, you know, extremely fit. So there was, no, I mean, there was no way Norman could look after him. So Norman, Norman, of as course, soon as was a hit man. I just went past the steward. Basically, I just pushed the steward out of the bloody way. Walked past, walked right through the director's box, onto the pitch, turned right, and followed him into the dressing room. And when I went in there, I mean, you know, you, you mean the silence was deafening. So Norman, I just said, Norman, Norman, get back out there. I'll look, I'll, I'll take over from here. But nobody told me to do it. I've done it on my own initiative. And what was, uh, uh, I mean, he was a handful in every respect. How well did you get to know Cantona? Very well. Um, you know, I mean, I took him to two court hearings um, for his eight months. Uh, I know, yeah, fate. But, you know, Andy, when you're driving from Manchester to London in a yeah. car, yeah, you know, you got a lot of time. Yeah. You know, you got three hours there, three hours back. So eventually, like, just get in the car with him. I mean, I had 12 hours with him alone. And, uh, you know, he, he was a hell of a man. Not only was he a great footballer, but, you know, he'd he done a lot of work as well for charities off the pitch that nobody really knows about. He, but yeah, he, kinda, he, he was a good lad. He kind of he kind of pretended to everyone, Ned, that he didn't have any command of the English language. Uh, um, so spending eight hours travelling up and down the motorway, how good was his English, Eric's? Very good. Um, you know, he improved all the time. I mean, I first I first met him. I, I was with uh, the commercial manager there, Danny McGregor, and we're going up to the uh, the Red Bar, I think he was called in them days, for lunch. <laughs> and I look at. And I see, I see Martin Edwards, Alex, and, then, and and I said to Danny, I said that looks like Eric Cantona, you know, in a whisper like you do. And of course it was. <laughs> and what happened there was that Alex was seeing Martin up in his office, and I think that the secretary of Leeds phoned up, making inquiries about Dennis Edwards, uh, Dennis um, oh, Irwin, because oh, Dennis started off there, didn't he? And then he went to Oldham, and then we bought him. Yeah. But then, apparently Alex got the old stick it paper and wrote on it. Ask about Eric Cantona. <laughs> and of course, he said, uh, you know, and Bill, apparently, his name was Bill somebody, Bill Butterworth or something like that, yeah, his Bill, name before I called. But apparently, that, he said, yeah. um, I'll get back to you. And he got back to you, and, uh, and the, the fee was agreed for 1.1 million. Extraordinary. Amazing, and that's, how, right? that's how it was done, really. So, so to take us back to the dressing room at Crystal Palace. Yes. What, uh, who said what to whom to break the ice? What, 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 what was happening in there at that point? Well, I just said to Norman, I said, Norman, get back out, I'll, I'll take over from here. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's just best to be quiet. And he, just, he was just sitting there alone. You know, the, then the, the game was over, the lads come in, you know, and they're all around him, like, you know, I mean, Paul Parker and, you know, Brucey, I think. I think Brucey actually scored the equaliser that night. And, uh, yeah, but, I mean, it, all, it, it really got out of hand, Richard, because, you know, Wilkie was a referee, you know, and he was disgraceful that night. <laughs> Hold on, you're supposed to be head of security, not a supporter. <laughs> oh, that's just wonderful. That's really... Did he? Did he oh, ever? Ex no, no, did he? That night, Andy, I was there as a, as a supporter. I mean, you know, <laughs> I mean, it's my team. But yeah, I mean, he was there, and then the lads come in, and then the, and then the boss come in, and of course followed by all the directors. They, you know, they were down in droves there, all huddled in one corner, and uh, you know, then. You know, they were mongling amongst themselves. I just kept well clear of it, you know. And um, Alex went out, done the press conference, and they were still talking away. And uh, we decided then, that, well, listen, I said, let's get the team on the bus first, and we'll come out last. So, I mean, I took hold of Eric and, uh, you know, and, and took him onto the coach. And then we got back to the airport um, on the plane, and then we got a, a, a message from the police saying that the place was Manchester Airport was covered, uh, you know, with reporters. So what we done then, uh, I, was with, I was with a friend called Ron Wood, you know, who's a big supporter. He used to own the birthday shops. Yeah, yeah, we know. And what happened yeah. there was that he phoned up his driver and we arranged it with the police. So the car came actually onto the um, tarmac. Okay. We got Eric into it and we took him home. And of course, all, all the press were, were waiting in the, in the terminal for him, but he wasn't there. What did he did he ever get round to discussing with you sardines and trawlers and seagulls? Did he ever explain that? 
Yeah, yeah, that was after the second court case. Yes. Now, apparently, what happened on the first one? You know, I was supposed to pick him up and take him down. But anyway, he went down by himself and he met up with Paul Lentz. All right, Enzi, yeah? yeah? And of course, next morning, like, it's in the papers, isn't it? Enz, you know, Canton on it's like, you know, leaving a, you know, leaving a nightclub in London at, you know, 3.30 in the morning. So that didn't go down too well. <laughs> but um, the actual, uh, the magistrate, or whatever you call her, um, actually gave a sentence that was beyond her. But, and that was, and that come from the clerk of the courts who was sitting in front of her. You know, I, I, I was looking at him like, and I'm, you know, I just thought to myself, yeah. And, you know, but uh, so the, she gave the wrong sentence. So Morris Watkins didn't have to go around to different courts, you know, to get, of course, we're down in the cells, and they are, you know, and he's, you know, and we talked away, and he just said, you know, Ned, he says, he said, listen, he says, I, he said, I, I think I'll just do the sentence. You know, he was that fed up with it, yeah? <clears throat> and one of the, the what, what do you call them? The um, prison wardens, is it prison yeah, wardens? Yeah. Prison officers? Yes. He said, listen, he says, he says, you don't want none of this crap here, he says. He said, there's a McDonald's down the road, he says. Tell me what you want, and I'll go and get it for you. <laughs> <laughs> so me and me and Eric are in his cell, and we're eating, you know, a Big Mac, you know, and chips. <laughs> <laughs> so I you know, put it. So he borrowed me phone, and he phoned up his wife, and he told her. Anyway, after about an hour or two, then Morris come back, and we were free to go. And then he went back for the second course where he had a, a QC, and um, you know, but the actual the sentence on him, okay, was she, the, it was above her grade. She should not have given him that sentence. And, you know, that's fact. So he was prepared yeah, to... Morris yeah, Watkins, and that's where we got to know him. Morris Watkins, Manchester United's lawyer. Yeah. Uh, oh, yes. Obviously, that's where the, 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 he was. But you're saying Cantona was prepared to do time just, just yeah, to oh, finish said, the problem. Yeah, we just fed up with it, you know. That's what he said to me. He said, it's two weeks. He said, I might as well do it, you know, just to finish with it. Uh, you know. I can see that. So he phoned to the watch. And I, I, said, I just said, no. That. You know, I, I said, no, no. Now, of course, I'll give him all the wrong advice. I said, no, it's nothing. I said, nothing's going to happen to you. <laughs> you know, two, 14 days. <laughs> I saw you in Barcelona, 99, the completion yes. of the, the hat-trick. You were just getting on the bus with the trophy. And I remember asking, was there to be an, an open-top bus tour and, and having a laugh with you about where it would be, Manchester or the M25. <laughs> <laughs> when yeah, you got M25. on that bus, what happened when you sat down next to the boss, as you call him? Well, as you know, we, we had a chat, didn't we? We had a laugh. Cause, I, mean, I, I mean, I've known you for years, like, you know, and he went inside, like, you know, you know, and he's, you know, like I said, sometimes it's just best be near him, but be quiet, you know, because, you know, he, you know, he's, he, he's weighing his, and he's thinking about, you know, what he's achieved, you know, and all this. And uh, he sat down at the front seat, you know, behind the driver. And honest to God, he looked up to the heavens and he just looked up and he just said, Thank you, Sir Matt. That's what he said. Amazing. Nice. Amazing. Nice. Yeah. Really yeah. is. How do you think it's but changed, what? Ed? Uh, is, is the game different today, your game, to the way it was back then, looking after players? Oh, yeah. You know? I mean, you know, it's I mean, nice to see that, you know, that Gary and Scholes, Giggs, Beckham, you know, Keith Gillespie was here with us, for, for you know, as a young lad. Chris Casper, you know, uh, Ben Thornley. I mean, all good lads, you know, and, you know. Um, what about Beckham? What was it like being around Beckham? Oh, yeah. Well, he was a young lad, like, you know, I mean, I, you know, like I said, I mean, I, I arrived on the, on the shores there in 1990. And I think, you know, Dave, I think Dave was still at school. And he was coming out there with his dad, you know, Ted, you know, his mum, Sandra. I mean, they're all there. And uh, he was a good lad. And I'll tell you a story, yeah. We just played Liverpool. And we beat them. I think it was 2-0 or 3-1, something like that. I know Scholes has scored a great left foot goal. <laughs> okay? So, she's there with Sporty Spice. Okay, posh, right? Yes. Right, and I get a call from Martin Edwards. Ned, come up to the director's room and pick up Posh Spice and Sporty. They want to go down to the players' lounge. Right? So up I goes, I pick some up and I take some down. Now, at the time, okay, the hot dog there, okay, was Ryan Giggs. Oh, yes. Yeah, and Ryan was tucked away in a corner with Danny Bear, the presenter. <laughs> okay? okay? Okay. So, basically, inadvertently, what I'd done was, 
you know, I actually introduced her and you know to the Beckhams, and that's how it started. And boy, Match maker, worry. Ned. <laughs> Match maker. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I, well, and the unintentionally, I mean, you know, yes. I mean, you know, G Giggsy was occupied, but I think, you know, I think Giggsy was the one she was after, if I, you know, if I'm honest. You know, but he was he was away in the corner there with Danny Bear, and uh, and then you know, the, I said, oh, David, I said, you know, you know, blah blah blah, you know, and the, and the way they went, and I left them to it because I had other things to do. Oh, but going back to that night in Barcelona, okay. We went to the, you know, we went to the party after that, and of course, you know, and being the way they were, I mean, I had to do everything. Of course, by the time we got into the party at the hotel, I mean, the place was packed, not with guests, with people like who just walked in there. <laughs> so I had to clear up. I must have had to clear up about ten tables. You know, who invited you? Who are you? You know, can you please leave and all that? Yeah, <laughs> and you got a few shirty ones as well, but you know, we managed that. <clears throat> so um, yeah, so I'm at the door. And Simon Lebon comes with his wife Jasmine. He says, he says, listen, he says, can you go and see Ryan and tell him that you know Simon Lebon and, and Jasmine's here? So I goes in and sees Giggsy, like, and he sits at the table with his mum and his brother, they're all families there. I said, Ryan, I says, uh, Simon Lebon's outside. I said, with his wife Jasmine. He says, let her in, he says, tell him to go and <laughs> let Jasmine in. Uh, <laughs> anyway, you know, that night, like, I mean, I'll get to bed at 6.30 in the morning. Okay, now the boss has got a, um, he's got a press conference, okay, at 10.30, and I've got to meet him at 10. So, honest to God, I mean, I got, I'm in a double bed, right, okay? You know? And what I do, I just tuck the European Cup, right, you know, the Champions League Cup, in between the sheets, right? <laughs> and then... And it's the best sleeping partner I've ever had in years. <laughs> so actually, be, uh... Okay, I'll tell you two stories. Both in the tunnel after the game. My phone goes. And Eric's elder brother, Jean-Marie, Jean-Marie Cantona, yeah? yeah? He's on the phone. He said, I, 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 no, but. He says, Nelly says, tell Alex, he says, that Thierry Henry wants to come to the club. <laughs> right? Now, this is before he went to Arsenal. So uh, his first choice was Manchester United. So I go to the boss. I said, boss, I said, I just said John Marie Cantona on the phone. Eric, you know, I said, uh, Tim Henry wants to come to the club, right? He says, no way. He says, he, he's always effing injured, okay? He went to Arsenal. The rest is history. The other one is John Marie again in the, after a game, yeah? He says, Neddy says, tell Alex, he says, Fabian Bartes wants to come to the club. This is in 2000, all right? So he fl flies over into the private airport, you know, I pick him up and I take him down to one of the hotels in Manchester. He gets into the car and his first words to me in English is, is there any bars that has pretty girls in it? <laughs> <laughs> Truth. <laughs> Ned Kelly, Michael T. Kelly, full name, naturally Ned, um, around a football club that was no, it, was, wasn't it, it was absolutely no problem with his nickname. It was easy. <laughs> Good guy. Mm. And uh, uh, we, we could, depending how long we're going to sit here, Andy, we could yet go back to Ned for a whole lot more. Well, he um, did say there are many more stories <laughs> to be told. <laughs> he did, yes. Well, we sort of pushed to the borders of acceptance mm. there with one or two. And, uh, oh, no, it was okay. He was good. I mean, think about it. I mean, can, you can, you imagine, can you imagine what was going through his head when the Eric episode? Oh. I mean, it, it, these things are just... And how funny was he about the referee? <laughs> the referee was having a night. He was rubbish. <laughs> no, Ned, you're security. <laughs> but he was a Manchester United supporter. Uh, upcoming, we're going to spend time together tomorrow. I know that we didn't and haven't yet this week uh, asked Andy about his three law oh. changes. We will tomorrow. Oh I've got another. Um, scanning you? is going to be one of the subjects on the agenda, Andy, Good. tomorrow. Scanning. And early part of next week, uh, Monday should be sensational. Uh, Tuesday, back in the company of one of those um, that legendary, there were no tales about, but legendary one from Manchester Premier United. League strikers, I think you'll call them. Very good. And yes. you said to me, I don't understand journalism or television. Right. Legendary Premier or League strikers? microwaved baked potatoes. No, I just bow to you, sir. That's it. Microwaved baked potatoes? Yeah, but I think seven minutes is too long. Why not ten? Five, stop, five no, in the oven. They'd hard, wouldn't they? Oh, a lovely crispy shell. No, no, no. This will continue. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>